With today's presentation, I'm going to be going over the linear static uh, capabilities, the frequency capabilities, optimization, and a little uh, linear dynamic. Now, if there's something else that you would like to see or uh, would like more information about, please let us know. You can uh, type it into the chat window, uh, and Kurt will be able to answer some of those questions. And if uh, they need elaboration, then what we'll do is we'll answer those questions at the end of the presentation. So, But uh, by all means, just go ahead and type away uh, any questions that you may have, and we'll cover them. So. Um, with today, what I'd like to talk about is a design. Now, we're, as engineers, we're always starting with the end in mind, and in this scenario here, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is basically a riding lawnmower where a person would have to stand at the end of it and describing how we can uh, use simulation to make a better product. Now, this is not something that's new. And this is something that can be made a little bit beefy, you know, to, to make sure that it can sustain the loads, uh, to make sure that it's safe. Uh, you, no company will ever sell a product that is completely unsafe. So it's not that this product is not uh, safe, but we want to make sure that it's a better product. And that is the goal of, uh, of today's presentation here. So the idea that we need to convey is, is it safe to stand on? Of course it's going to be safe, but how can simulation help you understand that that is the case? So we want to make sure that there's a, at least a factor of safety of 2.5 with the stand uh, that we're going to create here. And then next, will it withstand the vibrations? Well. Vibrations are very important, of course, in any type of a uh, motorized vehicle. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not going to vibrate too violently, uh, one, to destroy the product, or two, to cause uh, the end user to be uncomfortable. Now, as you know, lawnmowers are, con uh, are concerned, if you're going to be standing on it you know, for several hours at a time, uh, you don't want it to be extremely uncomfortable. This is something that the end user will be uh, feeling with their body uh, for a very long period of time, and we want to make sure that that is the case. Now, whenever you do buy a product, um, whether it's a hammer or whatever the case may be, you want to make sure it is comfortable to use. And that's kind of the biggest things with any type of ergonomic designs or something that the user is going to be um, stepping on, basically. All right. So first things first, let's jump into SolidWorks and talk about this, uh, this land, land, uh, lawnmower stand. And what I have set up right now is just a basic static analysis. Now, a lot of the ease of use is what I'm going to talk about. Because if any product if, that you don't know, uh, you want to come into a, a brand new product being able to jump right in and be useful with it. So if you're comfortable with uh, SOLIDWORKS or at least CAD design, then coming right into uh, to simulation as uh, you know, one of the add-ins with SOLIDWORKS will be extremely uh, easy to kind of fit into. So with this, uh, all we do is we create a couple of boundary conditions. We tell SOLIDWORKS exactly how uh, this product, what it, this product is going to be made of, um, what types of metals. Uh, how is it going to connect to the outside world? And basically, I've said that uh, these bands right here, they're going to be fixed, and that they're uh, kind of welded together or bonded together. And I want to make sure that every, nothing moves with, within itself. So I've said that the holes here, that's where it's going to be bolted down to, to the rest of the world, to the rest of the universe. Now, we are making a couple of assumptions. There isn't anything else that is connecting this. There isn't actual uh, physical lawnmower that I've modeled. So that is uh, one of the assumptions that we are making. But like with any type of a test that you would make, you have to put it into a certain type of environment. And that's kind of the goal here. And so I've fixed uh, those holes such that they don't move. And then the next step is to apply, of course, a, a mass for a person. So I've applied 175 pounds uh, where the feet will be uh, of the end user, and basically let's just say that there's those rectangular faces that you see in blue, um, that's where the person's foot is going to be, and that's about 175 pounds. And then although this product is very small, 
and I've also applied gravity uh, so that we do take that into consideration as well. So it's, it's a negligible load, but you know what, try to make it as real as possible. And so with that, all we did again is apply and tell SolidWorks the proper boundary conditions that, uh, that this product is going to see. And once it uh, goes in and calculates everything out, we get some very simple plots of, of, of stress, of displacement, and factor of safety. And we can see here that you know, where the, the von Mises strength here is going to be well within the yield of the material, so we know that it's, uh, is, it is going to sustain the load uh, that we're going to see. Uh, Another aspect of this is to be able to animate and make sure that your product is properly bounded to make sure that your boundary conditions are applied in such a way that the product will move in the manner it's supposed to. So for instance, if we are going to put a 175 pound uh, person on this platform, it is going to bend this way. And with uh, visual capabilities like this, it's very easy to confirm that you are uh, applying your boundary conditions correctly. And you know, getting the factor of safety is another concern, because that was the first tab that we saw, is that we want to make sure that there's factor of safety of at least 2.5. We can see that that's exactly the case that we have, um, or a matter of saying 2.58. Uh, that's fine. So we're a little bit over uh, the minimum factor of safety. So this kind of re uh, says that we well we've built our product to the right amount of. Uh, strength and to the right amount of weight. So this, the gauge of the sheet metal is exactly as we need it to sustain the loads that we want. So that's very easy to um, to figure out and to go along. So we don't have to beef this product up. Now let's jump back and see what else that we have here. So we know that the product is created Hitchell. with... Yes, sir. Hitchell, stand by just one second for me. Sure, um, sure. Someone is saying that they don't have audio. If, mm -hmm. if any of you out there can hear the, the audio, would you uh, use the uh, interface in the meeting to, to raise your hand? I want to see if it's an isolated thing. If you can hear us. OK, a couple are saying yes, it's, they can hear just fine. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead, uh, Kate, and I'll reach out to the person that can't hear us. I'll, I'll text him to, to get you heard. Uh, you bet. All right. All right. So uh, coming back and just trying to understand that we have accomplished the goal that we wanted to for the strength of the material, right? Its ability to withstand the loading. Now, this is something that can also be done with SolidWorks Premium as well, because we just did a linear static analysis on a metal product, which is easily uh, easily done. If you are looking to do more different, uh, more exotic materials, uh, rubbers, elastomers, and things like that, that's something that you uh, may want to discuss with us. Uh, um, at the end of this presentation just to figure out exactly which uh, package that you would need to analyze with. But because this was a simple metal product, SolidWorks Premium uh, was able to help us find the exact strength of this uh, design. So let's go further on. Now we need to make sure that we can sustain the vibrational loading of this lawnmower. Now, uh, we know that the blades are going to be rotating at a certain rate, and that rate is associated with about 28 hertz. So this is while the lawnmower is actually moving through at a constant speed, uh, whether uphill, downhill, hill, uh, straight, it doesn't matter. So we know that the the writing, the, the nominal speed is going to be about 1680 RPM. So not the startup or the deceleration, we're just looking at one constant RPM. So that's just an assumption that we're making, but again, it, it, it kind of goes to the fact that we want to make sure that this is going to be comfortable for the end user. So having the ignition go through, it's really just a small vibration that will pass within uh, mil, uh, milliseconds or within a within a second. So this is something that the person's going to feel for a longer period of time, and that's what we want to make sure that we avoid this frequency. So let's hop back into SolidWorks, and let's take a look at how easy it is to go ahead and run a frequency analysis to make sure that we're not reaching that resonance. So again, creating a, uh, another study based off the same criteria that we've uh, ran these linear static analysis with is very simple. So let's go ahead and start going through uh, frequency analysis so to make sure that we are uh, in within that uh, 
resonance. So once I create the frequency analysis, and again, I've already ran this, what I'm going to do now is just come back in here and show you kind of the easy use. So by creating a, just a brand new uh, frequency study, we can then copy and paste things such, uh, from other studies so we don't have to constantly redo our work uh, um, all the time. So I want to, let's say, capture all of the fixtures that I've supplied. So all I have to do is then drag it and drop it within the frequency analysis, and then I can continue on. So just by a simple drag and drop operation, I can set up a different type of analysis and, uh, and run it just as quick. Now, this is just to save on time. That's exactly what I've done, and I've ran the analysis. And I've asked SolidWorks saying, OK, well, what are the first, let's say, five resonance frequencies or first 10 resonance frequencies, however many I want to know, uh, what are they? And give me kind of a shape that uh, this item, this platform is going to, to move with, uh, with each of these modes of um, vibration. So having set that up, we can see that our first resonance frequency, it's about 28 hertz. And as, you, as I said before, we want to avoid uh, 28 hertz. And so we're kind of hitting that resonance frequency of that motor at this point. And you can see that if, this, uh, if the person was going to be standing on this platform, that would be an extremely uncomfortable uh, scenario. So let's take a look at some of these other resonance frequencies and see how this product is going to kind of deform. And we can see it as you go up in mode, uh, in mode shifts, you can see that it's increasing uh, in frequency. This is about 36 hertz. And we can see how that's going to play out and see what that person is going to see and feel. So if it vibrates in a certain way, we want to just make sure that we avoid it. So if we come up to, let's say, 36 hertz on our first natural frequency of this platform, I believe that it would be a little bit more comfortable instead of keeping it right at 28 hertz. So we have to run through a different set of scenarios, product designs, basically, different prototypes, just to see how we can avoid that. And of course, the shape is the most important aspect here. So instead of increasing the gauge, what we can possibly do is, again, uh, shift some of these feet over um, and figure out exactly where is it, where should, how far apart should these, let's say, uh, standoffs be so that we don't hit that resonance frequencies. So, of course, you know, making a dimensional change, running it, checking out the results over and over again, that's also a time-consuming uh, aspect. So what we're going to run through at this point is uh, an optimization process. And we're just going to tell SolidWorks how we want to run through that. So I've created that type of analysis. And so here, let me just go through a simple uh, version of the setup. What we want to do is change the distance between the uh, uh, between the mounting feet here. So I've told SolidWorks, well, go ahead and go from five and a half inches all the way to eleven inches apart, uh, and just tell me what they are every half inch. And then I've also told SolidWorks through just a simple sensor that I've created inside of SolidWorks is that I want you to tell me uh, where. I can reach a certain natural frequency that is above a certain value. So I want to maximize the first natural frequency. So inside of SOLIDWORKS here, this is something that anyone with uh, just a CAD uh, aspect can take in and use. So if I kind of modify it, I'm telling SOLIDWORKS, well, I want you to find me what the frequency is in Hertz. And I want you to find it for the first mode shape. So with these different distances, I want to make sure that my first mode shape, uh, I want to know what my first mode shape frequency is going to be. And I want SolidWorks to tell me exactly which distance is the most optimum. So running through those it, uh, variables, it's, it's told me that right around 10 and a half, you'll get the best frequency uh, for the distance that you're going to have. So I can see here now from 5.5 uh, inches across to 6 inches, and you can physically see the actual feet being moved and SolidWorks calculating the frequency. So of course it did, did give us the most optimum and we could even see that through a, a simple graph as well. So I'm telling SolidWorks now, go ahead and tell me what the frequencies are for each of these in a nice plotted form. So if I were to show that graph, we can see that right around 10 and a half, it does reach a nice uh, peak, and then after that, it kind of teeters off. So anywhere between 
10 or 10 and a half, you're kind of hitting that sweet spot. And after that, the further you move the feet, you're going to start to lower the first natural frequency. So with a simple optimization here, we can see exactly what uh, distance we need instead of having to create any more prototypes just to, you know, figure out what that vibration is going to be. So knowing that we have a nice optimal design, we can see that the natural first natural frequency gets increased to about 37 hertz, and we're well outside of that uh, running mode. So that's another thing we can uh, make sure we have avoid, is to make sure that the end user is always feeling a comfortable ride all the way through their day. So knowing that we can do all of this, this is something that simulation professional really does give us. It saves us time, costs, uh, and allows us to actually figure out uh, what the end user is going to see and feel. Now, we haven't actually talked about exactly what they're going to feel, and that's going to be the next step. But for now, we did make some assumptions. We did exclude the vibration isolators, any rubber grommets, anything that we would to dampen the system, but this is more worst case scenario. So we could have actually put all of that design in here as well just to figure that out, but for the sake of demonstration, this, is, uh, this was the simplest way of, uh, of coming up to this result. So let's take a, uh, take a look at the next step. So in, all right, we now know that if we increase it to 10 and a half inches, how, uh, what will that person feel? How much discomfort? And then if you're going to ask what is discomfort, well, you have to put a numerical value. We're engineers. We have to apply a numerical value to it, and we have to analyze what the acceleration is, you know, what the displacement of the product is, and we will figure out very quickly how much discomfort that really is. So let's hop in and let's take, uh, take a look at that. Now what we're going to, now what I'm going to do is hop in all the way to the premium, simulation premium side of the, the tools and show you a dynamic analysis uh, that, um, that we've done here. So this takes into, uh, into consideration the natural frequencies uh, and, and, and all of the boundary conditions that we've applied in the static analysis to give us all of the results that we're looking for to see exactly how much this thing is going to displace if that person was going to stand on it. And and so here's the basic setup here. So I've, I've told SolidWorks that uh, I'm going to have 175 uh, pound person sitting on it. We are still applying gravity to it. Everything is being bonded together and and then applied. So bear with me as I jump into the uh, harmonic analysis. This was the frequency analysis. All right. And so here, of course, we still have our distributed mass, but we also have a base excitation that we want to analyze with. So I'm going to hop in here just to show you kind of the setup and what it really means. So I've told SolidWorks that I want to take this platform. I want you to move it a tenth of an inch. And then with, uh, with that, display, uh, with that uh, displacement, I want you to figure out exactly what that vibration is going to, uh, what that is going to feel like, what the acceleration, the displacement, everything is going to be when we add the vibration aspect to it. So here, I've told SolidWorks that I want you to go from zero to 120 hertz, and I want you to find where the acceleration is going to peak, what the displacement is going to be for that if we do hit a natural frequency. So this is something that we can definitely uh, analyze to see. Let's say the, the person is standing on the lawnmower, and they're going to start it. So we're gonna, we want to cover that natural frequency as well. So we're kind of going through the whole the gambit of uh, frequencies. So with that being done, we can then figure uh, output the, the physical displacement here, and we can see what that's going to look like. So we're really moving at, the, at its peak about 5 uh, millimeters. So it's, it's not terrible, but that is what it's going to vibrate at. It's going to be fairly violent. And uh, knowing what the uh, frequency is, we can see what that response graph is going to be. So knowing that right around 36 hertz, we're, we're going to actually move a lot. That's another as, uh, kind of a response graph that you can output uh, with it. 
knowing at which frequency will you have the highest amount of amplitude, meaning how large is this, is this platform going to vibrate? And we can see that it is up to about uh, almost 40 inches, or 39, uh, sorry, 39 millimeters, not inches. So knowing that, well, it's going to vibrate a lot. Okay, well, what is the acceleration going to be like around that region? So we can see that as well. So if you are going to be going up and down, we are going to experience at least about two Gs right where the person's going to be standing. And then, of course, uh, as well, finding what that, uh, what that acceleration is going to do over all of the natural frequencies. So let's say I want to see what this point, the middle of the platform, is going to do as we go all the way through here. So when looking at the response graph of the acceleration, we can see that it just increases over the, uh, the time. And there is a point where right around 37 hertz that it's going to reach a very high ac acceleration, meaning it's going to vibrate quite a bit. So knowing all of this, we can now dampen the system as uh, in different ways to make sure that we don't reach such an acceleration uh, to make the end user feel uh, extremely uncomfortable. So having done this, we now know the exact values that uh, this thing's going to display to make sure that that person needs to either, one, wear the proper footing or uh, the footwear, uh, or we need to dampen this thing or make sure that the motor uh, doesn't exceed a certain uh, RPM. So many different ways to analyze, uh, to go with the design, but we now have an idea. And this all can take within, uh, you know, this setup and running time can take, you know, maybe an hour or so and just to run through all of this. But within that time frame, we didn't have to actually go ahead and prototype any of these uh, products or versions of these items. So we can figure out this data very quickly and readily. So... <laughs> Knowing what the comfortability is is extremely important, and that's something that uh, Simulation Premium can definitely get you to. So this is, uh, if you are interested in uh, getting very accurate results and getting uh, what the end user is going to be uh, feeling or seeing, Simulation Premium is uh, the package that you want to go for. All right. Now. Hitting all of these items uh, can take quite some time, but like I said, I've just demonstrated a very simple analysis uh, to show you how a simple product can be designed and iterated through very quickly using uh, uh, a static analysis as we did initially, uh, frequency analysis, and then knowing exactly how that's going to go through. So this is just another way of analyzing your designs uh, to make sure that you do get the correct uh, safe and accurate model that you're wanting. Now, I'm pretty much uh, finished with my presentation. I will take any questions, but um, right before we do that, I do want to talk about the other uh, webcasts that we are going to be holding, uh, one on 3D printing and scanning capabilities, uh, and we're going to have another Catapult session where Josh Altergaard is going to talk about design tables and how to efficiently work with them. So if there are any questions right now, I will be happy to answer them. Kurt, if you can. Yeah, um, I had a couple of questions that came in over the chat, and uh, I think I've answered them, but one was about how the part was meshed, and it appeared to be that you used the shell mesh, correct? That is correct. correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And then uh, another question came up about convergence and how we uh, – can, uh, can deal with that uh, specifically and when we have those uh, stress singularities that come up. And what I've done is pointed out that uh, we have the new stress hotspot diagnostics tool, mm -hmm. and that was uh, enhanced further in 2018 to help eliminate those things that are related, those hotspots that are specifically related to singularities. So, uh, so the, the uh, attendee that asked that, Paul, um, for more information on that, you can look in the uh, What's New PDF document that's accessible through the uh, interface, the, the SOLIDWORKS interface. Under the Help pull-down, there's a What's New link in there, and you can go to the PDF and look under SOLIDWORKS simulation to get information about that. Excellent. And we also do have uh, a blog series uh, for all of the What's New uh, items that have come out <laughs> where we go through a little bit more in-depth uh, discussion uh, 
from what the help menu actually does as well. So please do check out our blogs um, and figure out what's new and how it can actually help you as well. And I'm not seeing any more questions. We'll give just a moment or two longer to see if any other questions might pop in. But so far, no more have come in. Excellent. Just thank everybody for uh, attending today, and thank you, K-Tool, for a great presentation. Thank you, Kurt.